Okay, hello. Uh, I'm Fabian. I'm the, the lead dev developer. I am also created the current Mist and uh, the current wallet. And um, I'm also worked partly on Web3.js and other things. I want to talk today about what are dApps, because I think a lot of people have this question in general, because it's a new term we coined, and also why you should use Meteor to build them. So a dApp, like in its simplest case, is just basically an application talking only to a blockchain. So the main source of informa informa uh, information, basically the main backend, is a blockchain because it's a trusted source of information. Obviously, this can be a native dApp also, but this will be most likely a JavaScript HTML5 based web application um, because we have Mist where you can run it, which automatically gives you the access to the blockchain. And it's also extremely easy to build interfaces in a uh, JavaScript environment, in an HTML5 based environment. So, what basically makes a dApp? So, the main three components, and the main component is Obviously, an interface built somehow, like in this case, it's JavaScript, HTML5, CSS. It has a local storage, so the data is kept locally, which could be local storage, could be the browser's index to be, could be web SQL. And it comes from a place where you can verify that the DAP is exactly what it's supposed to be. So this could be Swarm, IPFS, any kind of content, content addressable storage. And obviously, it needs the access to the Ethereum blockchain, which is uh, what we deliver the Web3 object. So the Web3 object is basically like the API for JavaScript applications to interact with a blockchain. And this will be the object you will have in MIST available. And it's pretty simple to install. Just npm install Web3 or Meteor add Ethereum Web3. So now, a few people already probably had the question, why Meteor? Um, so Meteor actually is a full stack framework allowing cross client reactivity with all the server infrastructure and so on and so on. Um, the reason why Meteor, like this is not the main reason, what one reason is because I know it and because I wrote a book about it. <laughs> and uh, we, we build all our interfaces using Meteor. But the main reason actually it is, is it is ideal for dApps because Meteor is built to purely build single page applications. Single page applications doesn't mean they have only one page. It just means that all the logic is contained in the JavaScript, which will run in the browser. And it also has a command line tool for like loading a development server for package management and bundling. Um, so currently, if you would do this, uh, you would have to learn a bunch of tools. You would have to learn Grunt and Gulp and Browserify and whatever. And it's a pretty like step learning curve to get into installing building web applications. So Meteor makes this easy, and that's why we are re recommending actually um, using Meteor because it is so easy. You basically just write one line of code, and you can already have something visible. You can change it, and you already see something happening. Another major point is uh, reactive templates. So this basically means when your data sources changes, so anything you get from the blockchain. When this changes, you update, uh, up, uh, your interface will update automatically. So this means your interface will always be consistent. You don't have any kind of spaghetti code where you try to keep track of things, or you have to write endless bindings to get things right. It's just always uh, this based correct data. And the major point is it has Minimongo, which is um, an in-memory database. It's basically exactly the same syntax as MongoDB, but it's basically just in your uh, memory in the browser. And there are packages like uh, a package I have. It's called Persistent Minimongo, which auto-persists all of this either into local storage or into the index to be a web SQL in the browser. So you're basically just talking to this Mongo-like database. You're writing things there and it's automatically in your local storage persisted. And when you reload the application, it's, it's just back there. And um, one major tool as well is the Meteor Build Client, which allows you to basically get purely the client mm -hmm. part of your application. So you get a JavaScript file, a CSS file, an index file, which you can, and some static assets you had, and you can just put them wherever, like either on a server or later on Swarm in Mist. 
And we also provide some packages which we use to build our own tools. Um, you can use them in Meteor, but some of them you can even use without Meteor. For example, the ETH tools, which give you conversion with number formatting and so on. And some nice interface packages, so they need Meteor because they use the reactivity of Meteor. And we highly encourage using the Identicon, because the Identicon is basically the user's way of recognizing his address and his accounts, basically his identities he uses in MIST. So we use this in MIST, and we use this in all our uh, dApps we will build. And if other dApps use that too, it's easier for the user to recognize. So we saw this example before of the smart contract where somebody want to buy something. They all both put uh, money on the smart contract exactly twice the, um, the value of the product. And then when the package was sent successfully and he is happy, he can initiate that the money goes back except what he paid for the package. So to have a nice interface, you have, can build this in MIST. And I will not live code right now because that takes a little too long. But I will show you how it behaves and looks. Oh, that's OK. So this is MIST. And I will start mining here on my private net to avoid any chances of no internet. So this is basically exactly the button Alex was talking about. The nice thing about this is it's kind of like the internet of things, but it's the internet of components, you could say, because it's kind of like the button is the escrow. So the button gets the money, and the button pays the money out, and all the rest around and wherever it, it, this button is placed basically doesn't matter, because it's the, the button is the internet of thing thing. So we here, and this is basically a mis preview at its current state, and I selected that I want to be the buyer, or some random person who has money on his account. In this case, it's here the buyer. And the buyer can basically, he sees the button, the contract or like this, this component sees automatically who is there and what address he has, and he sees, okay, there's nobody I know, so probably somebody who want to buy the, the item. So if I want to buy the item, I basically just click on it, I decrypt my password, and send this magical commands to the Ethereum blockchain, and I, I bought the item, basically. So now I would wait for the package from wherever he sends it. Once I like it, I would actually press confirm, and the money would move to me uh, back my deposit and the price plus the two deposits of the seller. So the same thing would look different, the same button would look different if I would be the seller. So if I'm now switching to be the seller, it would look actually different because now the button recognizes that I'm the seller of the button and I now have a different function I can do. I can refund the buyer if I think like whatever, he sent the package back and whatever. Or if I'm somebody else, I would basically see that the item is already sold. So if you go ahead, so just to actually make that clear, so here if we look at our accounts, um, we see there's the buyer who has 1,000 Ether, and the seller has 1,000 Ether. Is that actually correct? It's actually a good question. Doesn't um, yeah. So we go back to the sales page, and we basically confirm that we got the package. And you also can see here in the confirmation window what actually is happening under the hood. So I'm the buyer sending an action to the contract, to the button itself. Here I'm sending no ether because I already sent ether, and I'm executing this function, which is hex encoded, the function name, with some gas provided. And once it's done, all the money moves back to the people who uh, which should happen if my private network works. OK, so now the item is actually sold for both parties. And if everything works, I lost, I, I paid. And uh, <laughs> this seller got his money. And the interesting thing about this is it's basically 
this is just the, the HTML here, and you see it's basically this simple thing down here. I'm not, not sure if you can see that, right? So it's basically this simple thing here. It's the buy button, and I pass in a contract. So obviously, when we are building a real web shop, we're not having one contract per buy and per, per sale and per product. We would write a contract which have multiple products which can be bought X amount of times at the same time. So this is just to show like a very simplistic approach here. So in this case, we just give it the address and the button itself looks simply like a button which gets a specific text and a specific class and a subtext here. And the whole code itself, so the self-contained thing is this snippet here. And it basically just have uh, the ABI of the contract we are interacting with. Is this readable? I hope so. So this is the ABI, which tells basically Web3 how to interact with this contract. Then a function which will check the states. It will call all these contracts function, like, for example, um, Who's the seller, who's the buyer, what's the value, and what's the current state? And then we have this object, which is the different states. So if I'm at the seller, and I'm state zero, then use these classes and this text. If I'm the, in state one, use this, and so on, and so on. And basically what happens if the, country, uh, if the template is initiated, we just check the state at the beginning, reading from the Ethereum blockchain. And then we're watching all the events which come from this contract. And if there's an event coming, something happened, and we will check the state again. So this will update the state. We'll update our reactive function here called template var by our value and so on. And this will rerun all these template helper functions we have here, which is only one, the get state, which gets the state uh, from this one state object and returns the right text or the right class or whatever it does. So basically, this function will rerun if any of these template bars here will change. And the same when I click the button. I'm just checking if I'm the buyer or the seller, or if there is a buyer or seller account. And then it will call the right functions. And once you call on Web3, Web3 send transaction or whatever, and you pass the right data, Mist will pop up a window, ask to confirm this transaction, and there you go. And this basically allows you to have the Internet of Web Components box. So what you also see here is, is using our little CSS framework we are building, which we will use for our dApps, the dApps we will build. If you want to use this framework, you will always like, look into our, like, similar like our design, which makes you look good by default. And it's rather simple. It's like simple um, HTML you write, very simple classes, and then you immediately have like a good-looking application. But this is still in the making, so uh, use it with caution. So just to check, the seller will see the same. Stop mining. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Can we open? Can we turn this on? Okay. I think it's going to be testing. Testing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's basically it. So. This is the dApp you can try yourself. Um, if you just go to this address and you have a local node running and you start it on uh, localhost, so with the RPC started localhost 8545, you basically be able to do things. You would have to change. In this case, you wouldn't be able to do anything except buying if I would deploy it with a right contract. Or you just like clone the application yourself, look how it looks like. And if you want to start uh, building dApps, our wiki page, I shifted it a little bit around. Well, this page here actually gives you a good entry point on where to look, like building dApps on Meteor. Thank you.